Medical gases, in a word, are life saver. Medical gas supply in hospitals and other healthcare facilities are utilized to supply specialized gases and gas mixtures to various parts of the facility. Now, source equipment systems are generally required to be monitored by alarm systems at the point of supply for abnormal gas pressures in areas such as general ward, operating theaters, intensive care units, recovery rooms, or major treatment rooms. Now, equipment is connected to the medical gas pipeline system through station outlets and terminal units. Okay, so medical gas systems are commonly color-coded to identify their contents. Example, white is for oxygen, gray for carbon dioxide, blue for nitrous oxide, brown for helium, black for nitrogen, and yellow for air. But as coding systems and requirements such as those for bottle gas vary by jurisdiction, so the text or labeling is the most reliable guide to the contents. The use of air is probably the most important for the vitality of critical patients. Air can be used in ventilators and incubators to provide uncontaminated and controlled air flows. It can be also used for the replacement for contaminated atmospheric air. And it's also used as a carrier for volatile anesthetic agents. It's also a power source for pneumatic equipment. Let's move on to carbon dioxide. We use carbon dioxide in hospital settings. Now, we use it to rapidly increase the depth of anesthesia when volatile anesthetic agents are administered. We also use it to facilitate blind intubation in anesthetic practice. It is also used to facilitate vasodilation, lessening the degree of metabolic acidosis during the induction of hypothermia. Now, we can also use it to increase cerebral blood flow in arteriosclerotic patients undergoing surgery to stimulate respiration after a period of apnea, to prevent hypocapnia during hyperventilation. And it is also used for clinical and physiological investigations, example, insufflation into fallopian tubes. Last but not the least, it is also used for tissue freezing techniques. And tonics is a 50-50 mixture of nitrous oxide and oxygen. Now, most importantly, it is used exclusively for the relief of pain, trauma, dental work, wound and burn analgesia, childbirth analgesia. Okay, so we know that the antonics is administered using a face mask or mouthpiece as this gas flow is controlled by a sensitive demand valve which is activated by the patient's inspired breath. Now, this enables pressurized gas from the cylinder to flow through a pressure regulator into the lungs at a steady rate. Longer and deeper breaths enable greater volumes of gas to be taken into the lungs. Well, that depends if it's necessary. The gas is rapidly absorbed on inhalation, providing analgesia within minutes. The patient safely controls the dosage and under normal conditions, there is no such risk of overdose because the patient's level of consciousness governs their ability to maintain its flow of gas. Talking about helium, it is used with at least 21% O2 to assist O2 flow into the alveoli of patients with severe respiratory obstruction. It is also used to prevent atelectasis and gas transfer lung function tests. Oxygen is basically used to provide life support by restoring tissue oxygen levels. For example, asthma, myocardial infarction and sickle cell crisis. It is also used for the management of sudden cardiac or respiratory arrests resuscitation of the critically ill and it can also be used for anesthesia. Now talking about the typical dosing for oxygen in acute conditions, for cardiac or respiratory conditions, it's, it's 
hypoxemia with partial carbon dioxide is less than 5.3 kilopascal, that is 40 to 60 percent, and hypoxemia with partial carbon dioxide greater than 5.3 kilopascal is almost initially 24 percent. Now, long-term oxygen is used to improve mortality and morbidity in patients with chronic hypoxia caused by chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, pulmonary malignancy, heart failure, or any other lung diseases such as cystic fibrosis and interstitial lung disease. One important thing that should be considered is that if the patient has polycythemia or the evidence of pulmonary hypertension, then the arterial partial pressure of oxygen should be less than 7.3 kilopascals or 7.3 to 8 kilopascals. Nitrous oxide is used as an inhalation anesthetic in combination with either a volatile or an IV anesthetic agent. Now, it is also used in combination with 50% oxygen as an analgesic agent. Okay guys, so that was all for today. We talked about six important medical gases and their uses. Please keep watching scadi.com and learn more every single day.